Hi, I'm Kathy, and this is my friend Mindy and my friend George. And we're going to watch a movie about inclusion in the classroom. This says inclusion means everyone. Everyone? Yes. Even me? Yes. Tell us your name first. Hi, my name is Doug Rubottom. And what is your job here at the school? My job here is uh, an ESE teacher. That's exceptional student education. And I'm also case manager for a specific group of students. Okay. Do you have an IEP for each student? Yes, every student in, in our department has an IEP. So can you explain to me a little bit about inclusion, what it is, and how it works? Inclusion just means to include, uh, and that means that students with disabilities will, in so far as possible, be mixed in with general education students, ones who don't have a disability or one that hasn't been identified. They will receive instruction along with the general ed students. In some cases, that even takes place in an ESC resource room, depending on, again, the disability and the level. So you mentioned employment. I'm, I'm guessing you're training them for jobs? Yes, I have a career prep class, and that also is now included in the IEP, and we write a goal for what they're going to do after leaving high school and what they're going to do as far as employment goes. Do these students have accommodations? Yes, they have accommodations. All ESE students are allowed to have accommodations, and that simply means that they will have stuff like extra time or preferential seating. Sometimes it may mean that getting skeleton notes. Stop the movie! Did he say skeleton notes? Or having someone assist them with note taking if that's a problem. Uh, any number of things uh, can be accommodations. Special education students seem to all want the same thing. What do you think that is? I think that they want to be just like everybody else. Okay. And so they want to be included in activities that are involving, you know, non-disabled students as well. It's back in the 70s, they finally got students with disabilities were allowed to be in school. Allowed to be in school? You mean they had to be loud in school? No, that means that they weren't let in school. What's that? Yes, before that, frequently they didn't go to school at all because they had some sort of a disability. They, they earned the right to be able to be in school, but they weren't really getting the most out of it because the teachers First of all, they knew very little about you know, what learning disabilities are, and sometimes was considered just to be slow. They were slow? I'm slow. Uh, I know I had difficulties with that myself. You did. I'm, I'm dyslexic and have a great deal of difficulty with some math processing. You're dyslexic and yet you have a degree, you're a teacher, and you do well on tests. Yes, and I think the whole idea of inclusion is so that they do feel included and they do feel normal like everybody else. Hi, it's me, Mindy, and I'm here at my school with my friend. George, do you remember what this says? No, can you help me? Yes, I remember. It says, inclusion means everyone. Oh, let's learn more. Who's that? It says, Rose. Rose. That's Rose there. Rose has an intellectual disability thing that she wanted most when she was in high school 
was to earn a lot of money and to be rich someday. Oh, I want to earn a lot of money and be rich someday, too. Me, too. Who's that? That's Abby. Abby is a girl with Down syndrome. Abby began school when she was four years old. I'm four years old. There, there were too many students with disabilities and not enough aids. And so her mom had to take her out of that school. She was not in inclusion anymore. Her greatest wish was to get together and hang out with friends a lot. Oh, I would like to hang out with friends a lot too. Can you tell which of these children are learning disabled? No. Me either. The boy in the foreground is the student with a disability. He's autistic, nonverbal, and developmentally disabled. What's he playing with? Jim is using a device to speak because he cannot talk. He can't? No, he can't. Earlier, we saw him in an Easter egg hunt with other boys and girls. Yeah, I remember. Jim and his classmates also visited a farm. His teachers asked him to use his device to tell them what animals he saw on the farm. So he pushed the buttons on his iPad, like this. Yes, and then that's how he told them the animals that he saw. Then I interviewed Anne. Anne had a son named Kevin. Kevin did not have an IEP or a 504 plan. Kevin's greatest wish was to be like everyone else. Oh, oh, that's like me. I want to be like everyone else, too. Who's that? That's my friend Gail's cousin, Christine. Christine had cerebral palsy. She was included in general ed for a few years. Inclusion helped her because she can now socialize better. This shows inclusion. General ed students along with the SE students. Can you tell which ones are general ed and which ones are ESE? No, I think they all look the same. This also shows inclusion. This is the co-teacher helping students in science class. Oh, I like science class. The other teacher in the room also is helping students. These students also show inclusion. They work alongside the kitchen employees, and they eat lunch with the general ed students in the cafeteria during their breaks from work. Pizza? Oh, I love pizza. Ooh, turtles love pizza, too. That was the end of all the interviews that I did. Thanks for watching it with me. Oh, you're welcome. Thank you. We'll see you soon. See you soon. Oh, that's so pretty, isn't it? Yes, it is. <laughs>